So after that, she went to visit her brother and his family who were in Germany. And I said to her, well, why don't we make the most of the time, things being long distance, and meet up again? So we decided to meet up in Amsterdam. Now, this is, um, this is where the real trouble starts. This is only about uh, a month, it's only about two months after we had sort of started kind of seeing each other. And um, so we went to Amsterdam and it was just for a weekend. And whereas, you know, she'd shown a little resistance to romance and dating in the... Um, the Norway path, and there was a few strange things like not seeing me and all that, which I brushed off at the time or made excuses for. In Amsterdam, it was specifically set out that this is a romantic weekend. I paid for everything. I paid for the flights, the hotels. It was set out as a romantic weekend between the two of us. The first night that we were there, we sit down to a romantic meal in an Italian restaurant and she tells me that she has invited her friend, a guy from California to come and join us. Apparently he had seen that she was traveling he said he had a free week, should he come and join? She, and some of this I learned later, she said, I'm with a guy. He said, boyfriend. She said, no. And I, she just couldn't, no matter how inappropriate it was in that, con in that circumstance, she could not resist the supply she was getting by having a friend fly from California to Amsterdam to join us. So that when she told me that, I became very upset. And I don't mean angry. I mean that caused me pain because by that point we, you know, we. We'd only spent, I guess, a few days together, but we had been in touch on the phone a lot and it was all good. You know, it wasn't all good, but it was, there was a lot of good there. She was showing me a lot of the things that I would have wanted to see. Um, but because I was emotionally invested, I got very upset in Amsterdam. That caused me a lot of pain. So that first night, I believe, when she told me that stuff, that was upsetting. I did cry. Um, I was very upset. She said she was sorry, but um, she said she was sorry. And then it was like working out some sort of compromise. So what we settled on between the, the, the two of us talking about it was that we would meet up with the guy the following day and spend some time with him in the afternoon and then he'd go off and do his own thing and we would go and visit the red light district, which we both wanted to see in the evening. So we met up with the guy and I said, you know, he is going to want to spend more time. So you're going to have to be firm. That's what she told me happened. We spent the time. It was okay. Although this guy was, you know, he's like a man child. Just... Um, in it, the stuff he spoke about anyway so um, then in the evening we went out we went to grab some food before going to the red light district and she was texting people a lot now I know at the time I had an inkling of what was happening I thought she was texting back and forth with that guy what I was not expecting was for her to 
And again, I forgot about this happening in Philadelphia the first time I went there, but we're in the red light district walking around and then the guy shows up again. So she had arranged for him to meet us and hidden it from me, knowing I wouldn't like it. And I, at the time, my boundaries, I guess, were a bit better. And I said, no, that's, that's it, I'm done. And I went to leave. But she took my hand and she was like, no, no. I'm sorry, stay. And this resulted in the farcical, farcical situation where the three of us crammed into a tiny booth for a crappy peep show in Amsterdam. And so after that, it was, and this guy was just a dickhead. He was like, you know, he's, he's secondary to all this, but he was like just being rude to all the girls and everything. It was just stupid. Anyway, um, so the three of us were walking back to the hotel. He was accompanying us. Now, I feel like I should have, in hindsight, I should have said, okay, we're fine from here. It was nice to meet you. We're going back. We get to right outside our hotel, the three of us, and he said, oh, that hotel there, there's a club on the roof. I am a member, so let's go and see what's happening. And I just wanted to go back to the hotel at this point. Um, and based on what had happened, I felt it was reasonable for her to kind of go with me. And I put my foot down and said, no, no, I'm going back to the hotel. So despite everything, me arranging the weekend, all the stuff she had done, how upset I'd been, she went with him to the club. She went with him to the club. So, I went back to the hotel extremely hurt and I cried <clears throat> and there's, you know, I can see here there's, there's codependency. I was so invested in all that and I was unable to regulate my, I was unable to regulate my, my response to that. Um, I was unable to take care of myself uh, based on what she had done. So she came back to the hotel eventually and she was like, come on then, tell me. Like she wanted us to, but um, yeah, I mean, they, they, this was one of the, this was really the first big, huge problem for us because she kind of justified her behavior. She was like, you should have come. Um, she just didn't, at the time when we were together there, she didn't really see she'd done anything wrong. Um, but it hurt me so much. I really couldn't get over it in the weeks afterwards. And um It came to a point where this, and there's some more sort of narcissistic behavior I recognize now. It came to the point where I tried talking to her about it a couple of times. And there was a time where she said, fine, I screwed up. I'm sorry. I messed up. But now I'm done. Now I will never talk about it again. Um, so that obviously is, is problematic. Um that's not really taking responsibility and um you know that doesn't show she's sorry that that sounds like ending the conversation to shut me up so um there begins months of extreme anxiety because of the way that went down and 
what happened. Um, <clears throat> so that's the Amsterdam thing, which was a that was a some kind of turning point. Um, yeah, so I know this is a long video, the first really long one. Thank you for um, sticking with me. I hope that um, sharing this has, has been useful to some of you to validate your own experience. Um, there is a lot of behavior that um, is common. People, people always say that narcissists share the same playbook. Um, I know there's a lot of crazy stuff that we all go through. Um, so I hope that if you're thinking, I'm in this situation, there's crazy stuff happening here, it must be something to do with me. Um, no, there are there are people out there who who are not like us and they have this lack of empathy where they will act in ways that you think are totally crazy but it's the lack of empathy is what they all share they all short, all share a lack of empathy and it makes them act in ways that look crazy not just to people who are codependent like most of us but to healthy people um so there you go it's a long video um i'll continue with the my story next time uh, thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to the channel and like the video, comment if you have anything to say. I appreciate any any kind of comments or, or feedback. Um, I look forward to talking to you again. Thanks.